Hello and welcome to this Warhammer 40k terrain building tutorial. In this video I will be showing you how to make some basic scenery for some ruined buildings that have been slightly overgrown. Uh, it's cheap, it's cheerful and it's really easy to do in a couple of hours. So uh, let's take a look at what to do. So what I'm using for my base material is cork tiles which are cheap and easy to use and you can get them from anywhere, any hardware store. So what I was using the paint pots for is to roughly estimate how tall I want the building to be because a paint pot is about the size of a space marine. So as you can see it's really easy to use, you can cut it out with scissors so great for to work with your children uh, if they're into the hobby as well or just a quick and easy way to make it for yourself. So as you can see it's easy to break apart with your hands, I don't have to apply a lot of pressure to do it and tearing it apart makes it look slightly ruined and battle worn which is which is the look I'm going for with this terrain so I'm making two parts two sides of the building where they come together and on top with that I'll be making a platform so any models up there will be able to see over the battlefield and have a bit of cover as well so I'm just measuring them up now and working out how big I want the piece to be. Because I'm doing a platform I want a small ramp to be up there as well so I have cut a small piece out which I'll be putting onto it later. The great thing is, if it's a little bit big, you can always tear it apart or cut it with some scissors. So next what you need is some extra strong super glue. I tend to shy away from model glue, like Games Workshop, and I use super glue from a hardware store. As you can see, a few dabs on that, and it sticks on straight away. Now, it may not be the strongest structure in the world, just having two pieces glued onto a flat surface with no foundations. I'm not a structural engineer, but you can always play around with different things if you like. Later on, um, using flock and PVA glue will help to hold the structure and strengthen it. So what I'm doing now is adding the platform on top. Again just a few dabs of this glue and it is bonded. It is strong enough to hold a f uh, at least six to seven plastic models and metal models as well which is great. So I now sort out the ramp which has also been damaged. It's always important to have a design plan in your mind of how you want things to do, but as you go along the way you could always adapt. So as you can see here I've added some side bits and I've got some bits from previous models. I collect tyranids so I have a, a hive tyrant's tail, a little ripper and a claw from a carnifex it looks like. So I'm just gluing them down because I've decided what I'm going to do is have some ruined rubbles on top of it to show that this, this giant bug has been squished in damage from the building. So now all I need is some rubble on top of the pieces. So here we are, this is what the basic model looks like. So part of the structure has completely been blown away and most of it has fallen on top of this poor tyranid monster. <coughs> So what I'm going to do now is get some PVA glue 
And I'm only going to show an example with this one. But with the PVA glue, you can use small stones, rubble you can get from any hobby store or you can find outside. And just stick a load on to make it look like uh, smaller pieces of rubble have fallen down in this ruin. Next what I did is spray it black. So this is now ready to paint. So what we're going to do first is dry brush it with grey. Now you can add multiple layers on here but because this is a basic tutorial I'm just going to do the one layer. So you get the grey and you apply it on with the dry brush technique. And it gives the appearance of concrete. Now what you can do is obviously plan your building so if it was a set of offices or if it was a bunker you might have painted walls on the inside or painted walls on the outside but again for this one what I'm doing is just keeping the dry brush grey and very simple and basic So here it is after one layer of dry brushing. Now again, if I was had more time, I would just do another layer of dry brushing on top of that. And then you can always add your painted layers on. So what I like to do next is put a wash on, either a black or a brown wash to make it look dirty and gritty. And just kind of blend in the grey a little bit more, darken it so that it's not standing out as much. What you can also do now is, uh, P or you could have done, is PVA glue some sand onto the side to make it look like the outside is a garden. And then when you spray painted black and dry brushed on that, you can do what you like with that. So with everything washed now, it's time to move on to the Tyranid model. I'm going to do it similar to my colour scheme. So what I do is white on the as a skin tone on the models. The best way to apply white though is to have a layer of grey underneath and then layer the white on a small bit at a time. But to save time, I'm just using a large amount. I then get my rust grey and start doing the armour pieces. Now what I have is a, a blend of blues that I apply onto the base coat of dry brushing lighter colours upon lighter colours upon lighter colours. You can do any colour scheme if you decided to do a similar one like this. So here I'm doing the final layer of blue onto the armour piece, the carrot piece. You can use any bits, I have a lot of vehicle bits as well and you can do fallen dreadnoughts, broken in tanks and just be as creative as, you, as your imagination can possibly go. Now what I do onto the white, because it is very bright, I add a layer of brown wash, Agrax Earthshade, from the Games Workshop Citadel range. And what that does is it darkens it and makes it more of a more of a crab-like colour. Like a Mediterranean crab on there. So 
So now one of the final things to do is to get more PVA glue and plonk it on where you want and get some flock of your choice. I'm going to do some grass so to show that it's overgrown. Uh, I'm just going to use the one grass in this tutorial and you sprinkle it on top. And you just put it where you think that grass and shrubberies and vegetation would go into a ru ruined building after some time. So applying this technique to the whole terrain piece, it really comes together. Now, if you have any parts of the model that isn't as strong, use PVA glue in those parts with flock such as on the walls there, and it, the PVA glue will help strengthen the hold. And so there's the model with the grass overgrown. I think it looks pretty good. Cheap and cheerful, great for children and adults alike.